So this next section of class here, I want to talk a little bit about the types of loans that you are going to see in your career. These are the most common types that the lender or your mortgage broker is going to actually recommend. So this first one is called a straight loan. A straight loan is where, let's go over here and see this. So what we have here is a loan and here is the time amount and here's the dollar. And in this particular example, this person's paying $750 a month and the loan is what's called a straight loan. Now what makes a straight loan unique is that the first amount of money, some time frame, I don't know, could be one year, could be three years, could be five years, every dollar that they pay goes to pay the interest, whatever the amount of interest that would be accrued on this loan is paid first. So all $750 every month pays the interest. Once that amount is paid off, then every amount of 750 pays the principal until it is paid off. This is a straight loan where it's paid interest first, then the principal second, okay? This is a loan that I very rarely ever see. There is a second version of this where you could, in theory, collapse all of this amount of money down to here. And what you pay is the interest only. And then on one payment, you pay all the entire principal off in a balloon payment, all right? So understand that an interest only loan is a version of a straight loan. The difference being in this payoff amount. In the payoff, all of the principal, if it gets paid over a number of months, like another 20 years, that would be a straight loan. If you collapse those 20 years of payments into one payment at the very end of the interest time frame and make one big payment, that is called an interest only loan. And how would you make one big payment at the end of this time frame right here? There are a couple ways you could do it. The most common way would be you sell the property and you pay that loan off and we're back into that math example we talked about. The other way might be that you refinance the property again. So an interest only loan is actually a very common loan in the investment world because paying only the interest actually makes the monthly payment lower because you're not paying any of the actual principal off. You borrow 100,000 here. At the end of this interest only time frame, like three years, how much do you still owe? You still owe 100. All you did was pay the rent on that 100. And now you sell it and you made money on that. That would be an interest only loan with a balloon payment and a balloon payment or a balloon loan means that the final payment is typically two and a half to three times more than a monthly payment. All right. Now, in this example, it's a whole lot more because your monthly payments might only be 500 bucks while the balloon payments, a hundred thousand. So this is the first type of loan that you will see, a straight loan or a balloon loan where you're paying the interest only loan, all right? So let's undo most of this. The next loan that you will see is the probably the most common loan, which is called an amortized loan, an amortized loan, a loan that is 
fully amortized means at the end of the term, you have zero balance left. You have paid it all off. A loan can be partially amortized so that at some point you have to pay off the balance with a balloon. Amortized is Latin, which means to kill off slowly, which is actually what I thought marriage meant. So here's how an amortized loan works. You still have this same concept, but what you have now is this curve that shows like this. Now, what you have is every payment along the way is some portion of interest and some portion of principal. Whereas in a straight loan, remember, it was all interest, then all principal. Here, every month, it is some combination of interest amount and a principal amount. And the, the addition of those two payments will always equal that monthly level payment. That's why sometimes you've also, you might hear it called a level payment loan. It is created this way for us people to allow us to create a budget because we know now that our house payment is going to be level every month and it's called a level payment. And in the example we're going to use, it is $750. Now understand, this is just PI. This is not that pity payment. We're not talking about taxes and insurance right now. This is just the principal. So every month I make a $750 house payment of some portion of principal and some portion is interest. And as you can see, as we go out more and more, the amount of principal gets bigger and the amount of interest gets smaller. It amortizes over a time frame. It dies off slowly. That's the curve that you are seeing there, okay? So amortized, that would be fully amortized, for example, when you end up here, the amount of loan is zero. You paid it off. Theoretically, you could stop paying here. That would be partially amortized. You still owe some of the principal left. And there, once again, we could bring in that whole balloon payment to pay that off through a refinance or through a sale. So you can have fully amortized or fully or partially amortized. At the end of fully, it's zero. At the end of partial, it's some amount, which you could then take care of. So what I want to talk about and do an example on, because this is on the state exam, is this example. So let's say we have got a 30-year fixed. Now, they use the term fixed because the interest rate is the same throughout the entire life of the loan. So $750 is my monthly payment. I borrowed $100,000 at 6% fixed, meaning the annual interest rate is 6% of the outstanding balance every year. So my question to you would be, after I make my first payment of principal and interest, after the first PI payment, notice we're not talking about taxes and insurance right now, just the principal and interest. After I make the first monthly payment of $750, how much is the outstanding balance of my loan? All right. So let me make sure you understand what I'm asking. 
if my level payment loan is $750 because I borrowed $100,000 at 6% fixed, I'm asking you, after I make my very first house payment of $750, what is the outstanding balance on this $100,000 that I borrowed? Now, what I want you to do is go ahead and hit pause and think about it. I truly want you to hit pause and think about it because this problem actually is way easier than you probably are panicking right now to think about it. Okay, so go ahead and hit pause and let's come back. Go. All right, so you didn't hit the pause button or some of you may have. So let's go through this. So what I have told you back over here is that your monthly payment is actually some combination of principal and interest. And my monthly payment is $750. So what I'm really asking you is how much of that $750 is principal and how much is interest? Okay, well, we can figure that pretty simple. At 6% interest on 100000 how much interest money would I pay that year? Well, that is $6,000, right? 6% of 100000 means that year I would pay 6%. But we do this in monthly math because I told you my monthly payment was $750. So I need to figure out how much of that 6,000 do I pay per month? Well, how many months in a year? Divide by 12. That means, and I did this math kind of easy for you, that in the first month, I am going to pay $500 in interest. Are we good so far? But you know that my monthly payment, $750, which includes some portion of principal and interest. So if it's $750 is my monthly payment, and I know the interest I pay the first month, we just did that math, is 500, that's a little five, $500 plus this principal amount. Well, hopefully we can do this math really simple and realize that the principal amount of that monthly payment would be $250, right? The interest is 500, so therefore the principal is 250. So I paid 250 towards that 100,000. So my outstanding balance is now 100,000 minus the 250 I just paid the principal is 99,700. And $50 is how much I owe on my loan after the first monthly payment. It's literally that simple. And we talked about the acceleration clause, and I told you they would not accelerate your 30 years of $750. What they would accelerate is this outstanding principle. They would call you and go, dude, you still owe 99750 and we want it today. We don't want, we don't expect you to be able to pay 30 years of this $750. There's no way you could do that. But there most certainly is a way you could pay this outstanding balance and that would be to go out and sell the home for 99750 and we're back into that math that we've done multiple times. This is a test question on the exam. After the first month, how much do I owe on my loan? If you don't understand, you better email me 
Raymond at realuniversity.com to explain it in a different manner, potentially. Now, because I love being a problem and a pain in your neck, I'm going to ask you a next question. The next question is, what do I owe after the second payment? What do I owe after the second payment? And I know most of you went, oh, well, that's easy. It's 250 less because we just did the math. No, because now we have to recalculate our interest because the second month, I no longer owe 100,000. I actually now only owe $99,750. So I have to redo that entire calculation again. So what I'm going to do is figure out how much interest do I owe? Because there's my principal amount now. The first month it was 100. Now I don't owe 100. So I've got to do 99,750. And it's at 6% interest. So let's pull out our handy dandy calculator and go, hey, Siri. What's 99,750 times 6%? It's going to say that it's 5,985. But that's the annual. Hey, Siri, what's 5,985 divided by 12? So this month, I'm going to pay $498 and 75 cents because the annual payment was this. Now, this should look logical to you because if we go back over to this drawing and we talked about the amortization, the dying off, I told you that this interest rate, the further we go out here, the smaller the interest rate is and the bigger the principal is. And that's what we just showed you, that after the first payment, my interest amount was $500. After the second payment, it's now only $498.75. It is dying off. It is going down. So we're still into that same math. If I told you I'm still paying 750 and it's some portion of principal and interest, but the interest this month is 498.75, that means my principal is actually 251 and a quarter, which should also make sense because the amount of interest on the first one or the amount of principal was 250 and the amount of principal on this one goes up. I'm paying more off. It's 251. So now I would subtract that from my current balance at the beginning of the month. And I have 99,750 minus the amount of principal I paid this month. Leaves me with a balance of 99,498.75, I believe. <clears throat> right? Now, if I ask you on the third month, you would do the same thing, only now your principal is not 99,750. That's what it was at the beginning. Now your principal is this. I would take that, multiply it by 6% to get a uh, amount of interest, divide by 12, subtract that from 750, and realize my principal is higher than 251 and a quarter, and it slowly eats away. If we did this math calculation 360 times, what would happen is the very last payment would equal the amount of outstanding balance principal and you would pay the loan off. 
That is where those tables come from. And if you've ever bought a house, they are show you that financing table over the 360 months. That math comes from this. You literally could do this 360 times. If you were an Excel spreadsheet expert, you could actually put this equation in and go and do it 360 lines. You will see that the last number turns out to be zero and you paid the loan off. This is how they calculate it. So we could make this really hard and I could say after the fifth payment, it's not hard. It's just tedious. So the test, I know for a fact, actually asks about the first month because they want to make sure that you understand the concept. All right. This is called an amortized loan to die off slowly. It's some portion of interest and some portion of principal. Okay. That is the amortized loan.